Welcome to the Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM. We talk about people involved in food and hospitality, and of course, music. The tastiest show on 100.4 FM. Hello, 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 and welcome to the local foodie show, Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM, the tastiest food show on 100.4 FM. Today, it's me, Alina Williams, your local foodie and the broadcaster on the Most FM, and um, Nathan Griffith, social, hello. social media manager. And our videographer today is Oli Foy. We are going to talk today about things that we love about food and music. And guess what? We don't have a guest today, and uh, we are going to devote our episode to International Languages Week, which is going on right now. And we are going to celebrate it the best way we know, by talking about food and music. Food around the world and music around the world. So, what do you think about the theme, Nathan? Um, well, I was introduced to foreign languages uh, recently, and I was also introduced to a lot of international dishes too and uh, there's so much to discover yes they are right and the first song we're going to listen is a language by any Kramer, and she is um um part, part haitian part uh, cook islander and she is a new zealander and let's listen to this beautiful song called language by any Kramer. Nathan, what is your favorite international food? Um, <clears throat> okay, well, I think um, maybe the pastel I used to when I was doing some research online. And it's simply a cake, like it's just a pastry, but it's the one I always remember. Mm -hmm. It's the one that whenever I see it on TV now, I say, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Oh, oh, do you think that it's my, it will be much better to put it this way uh, while as the song is going on? So it's actually made from egg. The egg, And okay. originally there was an original story too about it, mm -hmm. about how the egg whites were sourced somehow from in a certain way. Yeah, we need a recipe because without a recipe you could have seven notes and um, kind of 28 letters of alphabet, but everyone makes different sense out of them. Mm. Well, these ones actually look like they're flame, like uh, they must be flame on top because they're always like slightly burnt on the top, intentionally. Please put uh, the recipe or a picture of both on our, uh, on our page, uh, Taranaki Foodies on the most, and um, all our readers can comment on it. If you have any favorite foods from around the world, please um, comment. Um, down at the, at the comments um, below the video and we can discuss all these beautiful things that people can do with food from around the world and we prepared some really good songs from around the world about food we're listening to a language by any krama amazing lady who is an award-winning songwriter and whose mother is Haitian and dad is from Cook Islands and she's quite recognized in New Zealand. So here, yeah, um, at the time, I know no, we're not on here, but at the time um, they used a lot of egg whites to starch their clothes and so often they would take the extra leftover egg whites and they would turn it into cakes. Mm -hmm. And there's still a restaurant in France, I think, where you can go in <laughs> That's a good question. So the, probably egg yolks are made for... Um, oh no, the yolks they use, yeah, they yeah. use the coat yolks to make cakes. So. Yes, and oh, egg whites were used for something Starting. else. This yes. is actually quite cool, the way to use the whole, yeah. whole food, yeah. whole product. Did 
Did you realize that bolognese is a very strict standard recipe? No, I it's, think that it's everyone. Like a government, like from the food sector of the government has actually issued the actual measurements and everything. And wow. everything should be precise. So even the way the cut of meat and uh, where, sometimes even where the ingredients are sourced, like the tomatoes. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM, the tastiest food show on the Most FM. We are talking about food, hospitality in our beautiful Taranaki. And it is me, Elena Williams, um, and Nathan Griffins today in the studio. And we celebrate the International Language Week. Uh, we talk about food from around the world, we talk about languages around the world, and we talk about um, music around the world. And guess what? One of the best ways to learn the language is actually through food. Uh, write down how many different uh, food um, names, titles you know, and for what languages they came from. Of course, everyone knows sushi. I think they pronounced um, it's slightly different in Japan, sushi. And in fact, um, a lot of sushi cafes are owned by Koreans in um, New Plymouth. But hey, you can actually make sushi at home. It is not as hard. It just takes some practice and um, concentration, like um, you need to meditate before it, <laughs> and then you'll receive the best sushi. The best part of making your own sushi is that you can put whatever you want inside. For example, if you like salmon with no avocado, you can make only with salmon, or you can um, make it all plant-based and stuff like that. Nathan, what is your favorite um, ethnic food some, from somewhere around the world? Well, there's a lot of fusion foods now, and that's when all of these traditional dishes have been sort of fused together. And oftentimes the traditional ones, especially the long-standing traditional ones, use basic ingredients like potatoes or things that, you know, are so common. And it was always because of some weird reason. And, um, but now we have so much abundance in the world and so we can just access any ingredients we like. So the fusion food actually is more interesting to me. Wow, I, I love that you mentioned simple things like potatoes because I think we had a food show about potatoes we and uh, we mentioned about 20 different ways to use potatoes. You can make a booze out of potatoes. You can make potato fries, everyone's favorite. You can make mashed potatoes, something that's suitable for kids and elderly. Or um, you can make it into a cake or a um, um, pancake made out of potatoes knocking can be made out of potatoes so the next song we're going to listen is food around the world by the group called music in action an interesting title of the album rock and learn let's listen together food around the world So one of the most interesting fusion dishes that I've ever seen is spaghetti bolognese fused with ice cream. Oh my god, spaghetti <laughs> bolognese with ice cream. Um, was, it, was it savory ice cream or sweet ice cream? So actually the entire dish was made from ice cream and strawberry sauce and it only took on the presentation of um, spaghetti bolognese. So it looked like spaghetti bolognese, but really it was an ice cream. Mm. Such a cheat for, for a sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that uh, some people make pasta with chocolate or syrup or um, all sorts of uh, sweet things. Um, nougat, mm -hmm. have you tried sweet pasta? I'm not sure. I've seen it made with um, buckwheat mm. and I think one of the most exotic uh, pasta I have eaten is was with the um, octopus ink, yeah, squid ink, squid yeah. ink, and it was a beautiful a kind of a like a purplish black color. Mm, mm. It, it did have a slight variety of a taste, but I didn't know whether it came from spices because in a good dish you can't really separate elements. You, mm. you kind of taste all things together, and that's mm. why um, good chefs are in demand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you see the article this morning in the Daily News? Uh, there are actually several articles about um, food. One of them about um, uh, Hokai um, restaurant from Novotel and the chef who came several weeks ago, Vikram Zakaria. He 
um, created a special menu with all the Maori na native ingredients to celebrate Matariki, which is next week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM, the tastiest food show on the Most FM. Remember, um, you can watch us live behind the scenes um, on our Facebook group, Taranaki Foodies on the Most. And here you can see what the listeners on air can't hear. Awesome. So we just listened to Food Around the World um, by the group called Music in Action. Uh, I suggested that we all learn languages through different cuisines. Like, um, and there are so many different titles of the different uh, dishes that are incorporated in the food, and we use it as our own. Uh, what's your favorite? Um, well, mine is croissant. Croissant. Croissant sounds so fun and so exquisite. I like to have a croissant with a cup of coffee. What's your favorite food, Nathan? I'm a big fan of Italian pasta. I mean, the pasta is always great with cheese sauce, creamy cheese sauce. But recently, I've noticed they do gnocchi filled with cheese. So the the cases made from potatoes, I suppose, and then the whole thing's filled with cheese, mm -hmm. which is a really interesting take on gnocchi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I tried several croissants recently. One of these, obviously, is from Petit Paris, which is a French bakery. Also, another one was from um, this little bakery between, um, you know, this little uh, alley that you go inside. Uh, mm. And this is, uh, I forgot what its name. But also another one that I tried recently and I was pretty impressed was from Piccolo Morso. This is little cafe in Fitzroy. They have really, really good bakery department. They have a cafe at the back and at the front there is a bakery where you can buy something and just go at the back and have a cup of coffee and um yeah uh, that's right that we also had them on the show they told us about their fish pie with, yeah um which is sort of a take on fish and chips maybe yeah um, but um for me it, it, it wasn't the cross on that made them like spectacular my favorite pie there is um uh peppered steak one mm. what's your favorite there well i had a pizza the other day from them mm. was, it, was it good it was good. They had a pizza pie too, which I haven't tried. <laughs> this is what, what we call fusion cuisine, isn't it? Let's listen to De Croissant du Soleil by Emile Claire Barlow. Song about croissants. French cuisine is quite amazing, but I mean, celebrated all around the world. Um, but there are some underestimated cuisines that I'm very fascinated about. There is a lot of dishes in uh, South America, which I have never tried. There are mm. many dishes or ingredients or techniques in Asia I have never seen. They do quite red sweets there, and we are not exposed to it because, um, I don't know why, maybe it's just because sugar is the main public enemy at the moment. Or... In India, they take sugar, sugar sauce and they drop it in hot boiling water and it kind of sets until like a spiral yeah there's a yeah. brand new there's a brand new dish in america too it's called a waffle cake and they just say they just take dough and they just tip it into the front and uh, deep fryer and it sets into a like cake. a pancake mm. oh. oh and then you can have several layers recently um my um recipe was published in the nourish magazine and it was mm. a, a recipe of a uh, layered honey cake and I learned it when I was living back in Kharkiv and um, it was really really successful and this is so easy to do so if you're interested uh, go in our group and have a look at the recipe section there is a printed page from Nourish magazine there. What else do I like? Um, recently I, I got a fascination of Turkish cuisine. There are several shops in New, New Plymouth where you can buy uh, some ethnic food one of them is Vetro, another of them is a Crazy Pumpkin, and another one is uh, the uh, Fresh World, I think it's called. So there you can buy some um, ethnic ingredients. So uh, these Turkish um, desserts I bought in Crazy Pumpkin. So I bought some sort of um, um, Turkish delight, but usually we know one with um, apricot and rose. 
water, but this one was pistachio and another was with macadamia nuts and they were absolutely wonderful. They were not too sweet, they were really nice. And of course, halva. Halva is the um, thing that they do in Mediterranean, it's a dessert. It's made of sunflowers, seeds, and uh, it's actually good for your digestion and there are so many uh, different um, um, three, six, and, and uh, three and six omega um, oils there, which is good for your health, for cleaning your body on a cellular level. Have you ever seen omarese be made? Because that's really hard to do. Oh, wow. they take this, they take this egg, and they kind of par cook it, and then they fold it so it's all, it's all running inside and, and cooked on the outside. And then they place it on top of the dish, and right at the last second, they slit down the thing. And it kind of opens up, and all the oh, yeah, all the that. flowing eggs yeah. come. They out. do it in Asia, right? And it mm. makes kind of mm. the uh, mains are more um, rich. It's Western say. influence, though. Is it? Oh. Yeah, the style of Japanese cuisine. It says here. Mm. Okay, well, that's what we like about the modern world, that we can take ingredient from one part of the world, take technique from another part of the world, and cook it on the third, third continent, and succeed and have something nourishing, healthy, and uh, learn something new in the process, like the title of new ingredient, a new language through cooking. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM, the tastiest food show on the Most FM. We talk about language week this um, episode, and we learn about language through food and music. And we just listened to the, the Croissant du Soleil by Emily Claire Barlow. And uh, we talked about different ingredients from different parts of the world and how they kind of made their way to another part of the world. Um, and I think that croissants are perfectly consumed with coffee. Uh, just a little bit of um, advertising there, because we are going to have a coffee connoisseur coming soon to our show. He's not a um, blogger or he's not a related to any coffee um, business or something like that, but he's a very happy consumer and he knows his coffee very, very well. So let's listen to Coffee by Jack Stoba, Micropop. Them in a certain way. It's, yeah. You know, like pastry, for example, it's so simple. The flour that I was talking about, the funnel cake, this, it's not about the batter, it's about the presentation. There's so many dishes. I've seen a dish, it's a rice dish, but it's always presented in a big mountain. It looks like a cone shape and it's usually really quite high. Mm. And it serves not just one person, it serves um, a group of people. So it's for celebrations and things. I think uh, you're right. Uh, the presentation of the food is important part of consuming a bit because we use all six senses when we eat food, of course, we analyze the texture when it comes to our um, mouth. But also, if you take some part with your hands, you also experience this as well. Mm. Oh, it's almost finished. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM. We listen to a very short song, which is called Coffee by Jack Stoba from Micropop. Um, and we just discussed how important the presentation for food is. I, I said that uh, we use all six senses to um, consume food. If you look how food, um, uh, if you look at food, how it looks at the professional kitchen, and just all in the containers, all in um, piles, or in a um, little kind of a um, covered uh, bowls or things like that. But when someone brings it to a a visitor just like sometimes wow and presentation of food is equally important because when you see this or when you interact with food in a process of eating like crack something on top or uh, melt something or you open it and just steam appears or smoke you become part of a um, magic and, okay it's well a great example of that is with french fries of course french fries have been around for so long and just recently they decided to cut them differently and you can see now they've got the crisp cut french fries which uh they sort of have like a crisscross cut pattern to them and essentially it's just potato chips but I love, you know, I, I had to buy some for myself. Try it. <laughs> Pig's tails, uh, French fries. Yeah, it was also <laughs> quite a funny because it's like a, a little curls and, and probably very appealing for children. Mm. Yes, I, is mm. it appealing for you? Yeah, well? <laughs> and Hasselback potatoes too are cut in a certain way. They're sliced, um, 
mm -hmm. you know, down the potato. And then, of course, you can sprinkle the herbs in between the cracks and cheese, of course, mm -hmm. uh, which allows the, all the flavors to get into the potato as well. Yeah. So that's sort of a presentation thing, but it's also about, about flavoring the dish. Yeah, you can just pile um, things separately, but when you combine them, it looks nice. It's more appetizing, isn't it? I think it's a perfect time to listen to Pasta and Whiskey Day by Ellie Bitmaker. This is quite a funky song. I'll let you listen a little bit. <laughs> Someone asked me what a new holiday would you invent, invent and I wasn't sure, but now I think it's, it will be a pasta and whiskey day. <laughs> Pasta and whiskey day. <coughs> Oli, what do you call this style of music? <laughs> Something about beat. It's supposed to be with beat in it. <laughs> it reminds me so much. Um, recently, there was a band that came. I'm sure they were at Womad. And um, they were so jumpy like this. It was so amazing. It it's almost like a ska, you know, ska music. Mm, it's very, mm. um, there was, um, it wasn't the Goten project, but it was somebody more obscure than that. I couldn't quite remember. Mm. <laughs> Somehow pasta is so appealing. I mean, every culture has it. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, almost finished. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies. We celebrate Language Week on our Foodies show. And uh, we talk about food and music and, of course, languages during our episode today. We just listened to Pasta and Whiskey Day. It was uh, quite a funky uh, little bit piece. And um, we discussed the pasta is so appealing. It exists in almost every culture. And also, um, I couldn't just leave this funky and funny pasta whiskey day there. I just need something cultural. <laughs> so we're going to listen to pasta e basta, which gives you a more Italian feel of the word pasta that came from Italian language. So pasta e basta by Dini Cat. It's great, you know, so often so often you find a dish and um, the, it has some English translation, but in its um, country of origin, it's called something else. But so often, like, you'll find, like, tonkatsu and fun fondue and all these dishes that actually retain their original foreign name. Yes, and I talked to the lady who um, came from Switzerland and she's going to come with her maid to our show later on. And she was talking about fondue. And there are two types of fondue. Normally <coughs> the cheese one, which incorporates mm. three types of cheese. And you have little pieces of something and you um, kind of... Uh, Maple it, bread. Yes, yeah. and, and you dip it into this uh, cheese mix. And it's kind of a conversational dish. You can do it for a long time. It's not about being... Um, fed quickly. It's about um, taking time and uh, talking to each other, choosing piece of uh, meat or vegetable, cut it, and things like that. And I think this exists, fondue exists not, uh, not only in Switzerland, I think it's also French, mm. maybe German. And the second, the second variation? A second variation is with chocolate, but I think it's it is more modern. But I mean, Swiss chocolate is also quite known around the world. And then we did like protein, is that right? Like strawberries and yeah, marshmallows, uh, strawberries, oh, okay. fruits, and um, yeah, whatever you can put some sweet bread because um, the Euro European sweet breads are actually quite nice. presentation of music about food because there's so many music about food if um, we will kind of put them in one place it probably will play for several years 
whole music about food. So what, what, what is the recent pasta you cooked? Is there any pasta that you absolutely love to cook? I remember I remember buying those soba noodles because mm -hmm. when I found out about them, they were made from buckwheat, but they looked black, you see. So yeah, I was interested. Kind of brownish. Yeah, and, but it turns out buckwheat is just like a, a sort of certain variation of wheat. So it's not like they taste any different, but for me, I, I was into the presentation, the way they look black. Yeah. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM. We celebrate the language week at our Taranaki Foodies show and we talk about food and music and languages. And we went around the world um, about food and about languages and words that we learn from different um, cultures during uh, consumption of food or traveling or something like that. Sadly, we can't travel now, but we still can cook at home or we can watch recipes online and discover new things. So um, we listened to two songs about pasta. One was Pasta and Whiskey Day, which was perfect fusion from my point of view. <laughs> and the second one was a, a very funky piece about pasta as being a very good food for party, I believe. And um, a lot of people now think that pasta is such an easy thing to do and they're right. They mix it with something that they have from the leftovers, they add herbs from the garden, and this is the best way to cook, I believe, not following the recipes. What's your opinion, Nathan? Well, I was so surprised by the, once again, the presentation of rainbow pasta. Have you seen mm. rainbow pasta? That comes yes. straight from Italy. I think there is a lady in Seattle who makes a very um, creative pasta. So there are different colors, there are some mm. ornaments in it. And I don't know how it tastes, but it looks really bright on I'm Instagram. not sure it tastes any different, but it looks completely different. Yeah. But you m mentioned that you actually like soba noodles, which mm. is um, like oriental type of pasta made of... Also the healthiest uh, food in the world, apparently. Is it? That's, oh, yes. wow. I think it's a perfect time to listen to the song, which is called Korean Food by Frankie Cosmos. It's actually not true since the majority of food is perhaps healthy, but the fact that it probably lacks any sort of negative ingredients and sort of retains like whatever is in wheat that makes it so good for us. Yeah, well, I mean, um, we, we need to defi pain, define what you know, healthy stable. is. If um, nourishing is healthy enough, it makes you kind of stop being hungry is enough, then yes. But there are lots of ingredients cool. that are harmful chemicals and uh, kind of can um, provoke some. Well, look, if we look at pasta, what that contains gluten, I believe. Well, for some people, gluten is an uh, irritation. Right, so there's, there's something that it actually has that we don't prefer in our diet. So I think soba probably lacks those types of things. And yeah, well, I do think that um, buckwheat is, um, yes, buckwheat is close to the nuts, you know, by nature, rather, oh, okay. rather than the right. grain. So. Okay. I'm not sure. We need to learn more about healthy food. So if you have someone who would like you to see on our radio show, please write down and nominate a person and we can invite them. We'll schedule them in August because I think we have um, all, uh, all all the scheduling done, done till the middle of July. It's just today someone cancelled. So we decided to take an opportunity and talk to you directly. This is a very um, kind of calming music, isn't it? It is. Like Korean food sometimes could be calming, mm -hmm. sometimes could be exciting. Meditative, would you say? Meditative? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Primarily, I believe. I mean, Chinese music. Oh. Welcome back to Taranaki. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM, the tastiest food show on 100.4 FM. This is Alina Williams and Nathan Griffiths today in the studio. We talk about language week and we talk about international foods and music. So we've been around the world, we've been in several countries. We talk about um, 
words that come from foreign languages that we learn through cuisines. We talked about um, how we are enriched by um, discovering cultures through cooking. Sure, I mean, listen to the names of these dishes. Calzone, crepes, risotto, you know, cannelloni. You're going to tell it, you're going to tell it. Try to try. <laughs> yes, we missing Warwick today because Warwick will give us the whole list of foods from um, Asia. He's a quite an aficionado of Asian food. And um, I think that I can uh, kind of uh, impress you with a lot of Eastern European ones, but a lot <laughs> not at the time maybe next time <laughs> i think it's about time to finish and we're going to finish with a um with a music pitch which, which is called cup of tea it's almost like traveling around the world and returning back home and having a cup of tea which pacifies you which makes you happy and content let's listen cup of tea by casey musgraves Here's what I noticed, Elena, about foreign dishes with uh, that retain their original name. I mean, it, it's, it brings, it unifies the world because, you know, language is all about the different sounds, it, the different sounds they make. And, and when the dish retains its original name, you know, we, we get to learn all these different sounds that are within the foreign languages. So, you know, we learn, we learn a bit of the language, really. The dish brings a part of the whole culture, doesn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, it's an easy learning because you don't uh, think much about this and it's only one word at a time or one ingredient. Yes, yeah, sometimes you uh, learn something about this soba noodles and you think that, wow, this is such a simple, well, yeah, or, you know, remarkable you, you, name. I go to an Italian restaurant and all of a sudden I'm reading Italian. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How's your Greek language going? Oh. Yeah, it's going great. I got so much satisfaction from learning that language, and um, I haven't used it yet for anything. But yeah, you were going to go to Greece, but then obviously all this pandemic happened and the yeah. borders were closed. But yeah, oh, it's I'm going sure to happen in some future. Oh, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I, and you can bring us some new <laughs> recipes and photographs. <laughs> Perhaps a Greek chat room would be. <laughs> Greek chat room <laughs> sounds um like um something funny <laughs> but um, uh, Greek cuisines are actually quite uh, healthy as well I mean uh, mm. it's probably one of the most healthiest diet Mediterranean diet it has lots of olive oil fish mm. Mm, some meat lots of vegetables as well I mean, you look at the way, like the word burrito, for example, has literally been basically incorporated into our language because to an English person, a burrito, we know exactly what that is and, and it has no other name. And yet that's a, that's a Mexican word. So it's really, you know, those, the languages have used in, in the same way that dishes have used it, isn't it? Yeah, and this is, uh, this is beautiful, isn't it? Every language oh, yeah. gets enriched and, yeah. Looking forward to having some food at our Leadit Project Food Corner. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies on the Most FM. We're just finishing our show um, and uh, we were celebrating Language Week. We started with a beautiful song called Language by Any Kramer and we finished with a cup of tea by Casey Musgrave and we had some um, different words. Uh, from different languages they came to us through cuisine and cooking and uh, this is the, from my point of view the best way to learn the culture through food <laughs> so um it was elena williams and nathan griffiths with you in the studio of the most of them and see you next week online or on airways bye bye my good mm, bye. bye see you later